And now, a word from our sponsors. The Oyster Recovery Partnership is the nonprofit expert in Chesapeake Bay oyster restoration. Oyster Recovery Partnership has planted more than 9 billion oysters on 3,000 acres of reef and recycled more than 250 bushels of shell. Everyone benefits from a healthy Chesapeake Bay. Poor water quality and declining habitats can be reversed. Oysters are the answer. Pescavore is packaged in a convenient single serving size with no refrigeration required until after opening. Pescavore is the perfect, healthy, and delicious snack for those on the go. Pescavore, tuna that travels. Hey, what's going on, good people? It's Gardner Douglas, your Oyster Ninja. I'm here today with North Carolina Oyster Trail and Ghost Fleet Oyster Company. And we are about to talk about some great things that's going down in North Kakalaki. So you're, is it the shirt up and throw it around your head like a helicopter? Yeah. Okay. That's All right. right. Anywho, <laughs> um, let's, what's that? 2002? 2001. Uh, anywho, what's going on, guys? What's going on? Hey. <laughs> it's nice and humid here. Yeah. yeah. So we got um, Rachel and Cody with Ghost Fleet, and we have Miss Jane with NC Oyster Trail. So, um, first of all, thank you guys for joining the podcast. Um, I, I think I've been wanting to get you guys on here for a while. Um, and just in between times, um, of course, did we meet through, um, was it Instagram or through Oyster uh, South? I can't even remember now. You guys remember? I think Instagram, but we are members of Oyster South. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, of course, shout out to Oyster Yourself, the 501C that's doing great things for the aquaculture industry and being bringing folks together like us. Um, they're doing great things. So, um, first of all, let's jump on NC Oyster Trail. What's go- So, how did that even start? What is that NC Oyster Trail? Yeah, so in 2020, we got going. Uh, The North Carolina Oyster Trail brings together shellfish growers like Rachel and Cody at Ghost Fleet, folks that are offering farm tours. Um, See the picture of the farm in the background. That's uh, Rachel and Cody's place. It's gorgeous. And we've got seafood restaurants selling North Carolina oysters year round on our trail. You can go and volunteer to protect coastal habitat, to restore habitat, um, to make our environment a better place for oysters. Um, Oysters bring a lot of benefits to our environment. So that's one of the reasons that I love them so much. They're filter feeders, they clean the water, they provide a lot of ecosystem services, and obviously they're very tasty. Um, so if you go to ncoystertrail.org, there's an interactive map there. You can see all the ways to enjoy North Carolina oysters at a seafood market, a festival, on a tour. Um, it's, it's great. And we've got the trail is um, uh, going across the coast, up and down the coast of North Carolina, as well as inland. Nice. So why did NC Oyster Trail even start? Like, who came up with the idea? Like, let's do this trail and spotlight great oysters and restaurants and all those, all those type of things. I think the idea came from growers, you know, shellfish growers who wanted people to really understand, you know, how are oysters grown? Um, what is going on in North Carolina? Why are we increasing the number of oysters in our state at such a rapid clip? Um, And so I think it was even um, maybe Tom Cannon back in the day who started an Instagram uh, for the Oyster Trail. He's another grower in the area, and uh, he luckily gave me the reins to that, (laughs) gave me the password and whatnot. Um, And since there, it's just grown a lot. I'm trying to think, Cody and Rachel, when did you all join the trail? It was either 2020 or 2021, I think late 2020 or early 2021, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it was towards the beginning of our time as oyster farmers, um, that we were, we were trying to branch out and do some different stuff. So I would think that that would be right, but I can't be specific. No, that's not, that's not Uh, right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Rachel and Cody got in on the trail pretty early on. They offer some of the best tours out there. Um, they're, you know, 
letting people come out on their boat and seeing, you know, really what it takes to, to farm in the water. A lot of people have visited farms on land. Not too many people have seen farming in the ocean or estuary. I'm going to ask, like, what does, um, what does a farm tour, like, even look like uh, from, you know, a person coming and, and they want to find out what you're doing? Yeah, so a farm tour um, for us is uh, it's, it's a unique experience. So it doesn't have to be anything that's 100% uh, scripted or it's not 100% set in schedule. It's a very unique uh, individualistic experience. So for us, it usually starts out with a location that's convenient to um, you know the individuals looking to experience the Oyster Trail. So we have three farms, so we can kind of you know, and a lot of farmers here in North Carolina have multiple farms. So there's a, there's an opportunity to see multiple different things. So we kind of choose their location. Uh, we'll pick them up somewhere convenient and then we'll take them to the farm. Uh, we'll add other things, you know, in there, um, some ecology, some, um, you know, culture, you know, locally. Uh, and we'll arrive on the farm. We'll go all the way from the seed to the shuck. And so, you know, we have this, um, you know, this sort of saying on our farm, it's a, uh, you know, like when you go and visit a regular farm, it's a farm to fork. Uh, for us, it's um, farm to shuck. And uh, so we take that whole entire process to the end. And then once we get to the end, we've, uh, you know, we're certified by the state of Carolina to eat the shellfish off of our farm. So that's a challenge here in North Carolina. So when we first joined the trail, um, that was really a big question mark. And it's still a little bit of a question mark in a process. It's a process that's evolving. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the end of the tour, we'll eat some oysters if they want to try them. And then from there, we tend to try to make it a sunset cruise or some kind of a, you know, we try to add something in the, at the very end to make that experience even more memorable and, you know, and give them a reason to, you know, love North Carolina's coast, not just for the oysters, but for the whole entire system as a whole. So uh, I, that's my opinion of what an oyster farm tour is, but, you know, the great thing about an oyster farm tour in North Carolina is like there's so many different kinds of farms, so many different sceneries and environments that like mm -hmm. every person might have a different answer to that question. So if anybody else wants to jump in and answer that, you know, that, uh, you know, it, it could be cool to hear what other people have to say. So. And, and they're very um, customized to whoever comes out. We have a lot of people who are really interested in the science. Uh, which is kind of my forte, you know, and we can go over all the ecology and all the great benefits of oysters. And I have people who are more interested in like the culinary aspect of it. Like, why do your oysters taste the way they do? What, how does oyster get its flavor? How, what are the sanitation? What is everything that goes along with that? And then we have people who just want to bring some wine and enjoy the beautiful view and the sunset. So it's really what, what you want to make of it. It's, um, it's pretty customizable and we always have a good time and uh, getting to meet people from all over the country, not just North Carolina, is so much fun and getting to talk to them uh, is part of the reason that we, we like yeah. to do it. And we like to see people, you know, learn about oysters in a completely different way. You know, where did they come from? It's not, it's definitely hard work. And, and we, you know, we see people appreciate that and then grow, grow to love and see oysters mm -hmm. and then order them and ask for them in local restaurants. And that's part of being a part of the trail you know we we work with our local restaurants we and they tell their people about our oyster mm -hmm. tours where their oysters come from and all that uh back and forth is is really cool yeah and i've been on tours up north you know in the outer banks off of cape hatteras um on the sound side of hatteras island you know where the oysters are really salty you know you're really pretty far out and then if you're closer inland and you don't have um, maybe an inlet to um, the open ocean, you know, your oysters are going to have a little bit different flavor profile in a completely different environment. So, you know, from Parker's Island, the central coast to down where Rachel and uh, Cody are closer to Hampstead, closer to Wilmington area, um, you can just have a totally different experience, you know, with the environment, with the taste of that oyster. You know, oysters taste differently, obviously, based on what they're eating, their conditions. And so whenever I'm on a tour, I'm just excited to see, you know, what is this particular spot like? Um, you know, what's this grower doing? What technology are they using? You know, um, what do they bring to the table that's a little bit different? 
Okay, cool. So um, let's talk a little bit before we go into uh, Ghost Fleet. Let's talk a little bit about um, North Carolina uh, Oyster uh, Week. Like, when is that? What is it all about? Let's talk about it. Yeah, Oyster Week is October 10th through the 16th, and we will be celebrating really all month long, though, in October. Um, so uh, we expect uh, Governor Cooper here in North Carolina to proclaim our Oyster Week official. So look for that announcement. Um, but we will celebrate all month long with special events. Our restaurants will be offering North Carolina Oyster Happy Hours. Um, we'll be having volunteer events where you can go out um, and you know work on a living shoreline um, and then hit up your happy hour after that. Uh, virtual and in-person education events with growers. We get the aquariums involved, our local museums showing off oyster history. Um, so it's just, uh, you know, a week long, and then we kind of turn it into a month-long celebration. So, so, Jane, before we even go deeper into this, why do you care? Why do you care so much? Like what got you in this world, this oyster world? You know, so I ask you this because you don't find um, normal and ordinary people who actually care about uh, their environment and stuff like that. It's a special type of person. So what <laughs> jump started you in this lifestyle? Yeah, well, you know, I live way inland too. I'm in Raleigh, so I am nowhere near where oysters are grown. Um, I really have to, uh, you know, travel a bit to to hang out with the folks that that make oysters possible in our state. Um, I work for North Carolina Sea Grant. We are a NOAA program, so we do research, we conduct research, outreach, and education on coastal marine issues. I have a background working in environmental issues of all kinds, uh, all kinds from forestry to um, uh, ocean and coastal to freshwater uh, resources. Um, I have not worked in any deserts or uh, icy tundras yet, but someday maybe I'll get there. I've worked all around the country from the Great Lakes, the Pacific Northwest, the Midwest, and currently in North Carolina. Um, and so the specialness, kind of what draws me to the oyster trail and to the oyster world is that it's a gateway for people to understand why their environment matters. When we eat something, when it's something we love to, to enjoy at the dinner table with our family, with our friends, it's a connection point, um, a starting kind of a conversation point of, you know, where did this come from? You know, why um, is it hard to get oysters sometimes? Why do oysters cost so much? Um, why do we have scarcity? Where's the supply? Um, there's economic questions. There's environmental questions. You know, after a rain event, why can't I get an oyster? Uh, what's going on there? And so I just find it such an interesting conversation to have with people. And the conversation is always different. Um, you know, people, you know, they're still telling me, oh, yeah, I can't eat oysters in our months, right? Um, or except for our months. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you can eat them all year round in North Carolina. We now have farmed oysters representing a half, 50% or more of our supply of oysters. Wow. It's only wild oysters that you can't eat in the summer months. And that's only because we want to keep them reproducing. And so their spawning times are in that summer months. That's when they're growing up. Um, and so it's just this kind of ongoing conversation that it's it, it never gets boring for me. Um, so that's that's kind of where I'm at. And what made you two crazy kids want to start an oyster farm? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, it, it truly just began with a, a love for oysters. So when Rachel was in grad school at um, uh, Virginia Commonwealth University up in Richmond, um, we really got to experience Virginia's, you know, oyster culture there. And so we fell in love with a lot of farm-raised oysters that were coming out of the bay, um, like the Rappahannock River oysters. Um, and uh, and that, at that moment in time, it really wasn't a thing here in North Carolina. You know, that was back in 2000. 
a long Ten, time ago. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it wasn't forever ago, but it was long enough ago where there really weren't any farms here in North Carolina. And so what we we sort of watched North Carolina's oyster culture evolve, and we were living in Raleigh. And I'm a full-time fireman. That's what I've been for a long time. Um, Rachel's an environmental scientist. And so we uh, we were sitting around one day, and we decided, hey, it's time to go live our dreams. What do we want to do? And we said, let's be oyster farmers and commercial fishermen. And this is going to be an interesting journey. We just had a baby, and, uh, and let's go. And so we... You know, we uh, we took a crazy step, and here we are. So it was like a uh, a scientist and a um, you know a, a fisherman co- kind of collided, and it made it made for the perfect combination. So we love um, some great places in Raleigh, um, like St. Rocks. Um, you know, the Oyster Trail does go far into North Carolina, so there's some great places that we've eaten farm raised oysters at for a long time here in the state. And there are, uh, now there are neighbor farmers. And so we really get to see that connection kind of, you know, come home for us a little bit. Uh, that was, that's pretty much my, my version of the story. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, it's always two sides, right? It, yeah. You know, I, I, <laughs> we're, you know, we're a unique, you know, couple because we, uh, you know, we support each other's craziness, I think. Uh, Rachel may not agree at all, all ways. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. <laughs> we, you know, we uh, she's more shy, and you know, I'm more outgoing. And so for me, it's um, you know, she enjoys the sciencey kind of behind the scenes side of it, and I enjoy the, um, you know, the interaction with the customers and the restaurants and that sort of day to day practices. So it, it works. It works out pretty well for us. You know, we we don't have uh, you know, we don't. It's a new company, right? And really in the sense of companies, but we don't really fight much. We, uh, you know, we're on the same page. It's really stressful, but somehow, you know, we, we work through this journey together and, you know, hopefully one day it'll be, it'll be even better than it is now. But for now, I feel pretty good about it, Rachel. Yeah. And I'll just add, Cody does, I, I say he does the, the water side. So he's, he's the one out on the boat. He's the one doing all the, all the hard labor <laughs> and I'm the one in, you know, talking to Jane about oyster stuff and, or promoting stuff, or I do more of the, the land side. And then we kind of brainstorm, you know, we can talk about, gosh, there's too many barnacles on the oysters. What's going on? How can we, you know, pinpoint this with science and what we know about our water, that kind of stuff. We kind of pull, pull our brains mm-hmm. together. So it's, it's definitely been a, a team effort. I always say, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, North Carolina has a um, pretty deep culture of wild oysters. Uh, so, you know, I, I will, in North Carolina, there's, there's, you know, not many people that hold commercial fishing licenses, but pretty much anybody can get a shellfish license and go mm-hmm. out and harvest um, shellfish commercially. Um, so, as a commercial fisherman, my side of the commercial fisherman, um, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty unique in the fact that, you know, we, uh, the best way to say it, it's pretty unique in the fact that like we were able to transition from like a commercial fishing mindset to like an oyster farming mindset because this culture is so deeply set in in traditional styles of fishing here in North Carolina it was even difficult for us to kind of transition into a farm raised oyster mindset um, you know when we first thought about being oyster farmers we even we thought hey what if we picked more select wild oysters and maybe that was our mindset and then we said well we're looking at the environmental factors and we're like, you know, this is definitely what we have to do. We have to change this culture. So, you know, the oyster trail, maybe, Jay, maybe you understood, maybe you know how we got, how did we get to the uh, Napa Valley of Oyster Farm? Or Napa, you know, I, don't, I don't know how that phrase 100% came out, but we sort of coined that. This is the Napa Valley of, um, you know, oyster farming right here in North Carolina. And, you know, we, we've kind of adapted to it. Um, and, uh, and so it's fun to, it's fun to see so many farmers in such a small space for us that it uh, is, an, it's, it's like the best community you could ever hope for. We work with our local farmers where it's like, it's almost like a co-op, but not exactly. Like we all work together. We help each other, you know, other. as we have issues, we work with, you know, just like Oyster yourself. It's almost exactly like that here in North Carolina with all our farmers. And it's, it's amazing. And the Oyster Trail really has helped bring a ton of us together so we go from regular commercial fishing all the way to where we are now and it's just like ah amazing so but how did we get to that phrase the napa valley yeah Um, so rowan jacobson um he 
has done a lot of study of oysters around the country, around the world. And I think he wrote a book, um, maybe it was called The Essential Oyster, but he took some time, you know, down in the Southeast, um, spent some time in North Carolina, you know, trying out our oysters. And he really was convinced that this can be the Napa Valley of oysters. You know, we think about miroir and all of the different um, kind of varietals and notes that you get with wine, depending on where they're grown and how they're cultivated. And it's the same thing for oysters here in our state. Um, I mean, we have such a long and varied coastline and it's not, you know, incredibly developed like some, you know, areas along the east or west coast. So we have still a lot of opportunity to grow out our supply and grow this industry and grow the kind of, you know, diversity of oysters um, that, that, you know, I'm hoping to see. Just to bring up uh, Ron Jacobson, um, we, I don't think I've ever talked to him on but that was the first oyster book I ever read, The Essential mm-hmm. Oyster, um, followed by The Big Oyster and mm-hmm. uh, a lot of other ones. Uh, but yeah, he's a great person. And to, yeah, the Napa Valley of Oysters, that's that's awesome. That's an awesome tagline. Um, so um, let's let's jump with uh, Ghost Fleet real quick. So just if you could explain how your farm is run, like far as like, you know, the cages and the farming method. And also, you know, the, the, the salinity of your oysters. Yeah. Um, so Ghost Fleet Oyster Company is basically a two-part company. We have oyster sales, and then we have an education side. Um, we focus on those two sides equally. So what I'll do is I'll focus on the farming side, and then I'll let Rachel talk about the education side and kind of how the, the trail fits into that. Um, but as far as farming, uh, you know, we, we farm – uh oysters here in north carolina we fall we farm them um in traps bay which is an area near Sneeds ferry and we farm in topsail sound which is kind of near topsail island surf city um we farm in floating gear so we um you know just normal oyster cages that uh, hold six bags and we hold farm in regular single bags that are also floating uh, through that method, you know, we, uh, we try to go through a pretty aggressive uh, drying cycles. Um, our farms have some pretty powerful conditions, so we get a lot of good tumble. Um, but we have just enough protection from North Carolina's beautiful coast where, you know, you know, even during massive storms, you know, we still are slightly protected in where our, our farms are. Uh, to describe the marijuana of our oyster, um, it's pretty salty. So we, uh, we picked locations that um, kind of fit a profile of an oyster that was our favorite. Uh, we like a salty oyster. So we decided, hey, let's go as close to the inlets as we can um, without compromising, you know, uh, a little bit too much risk. So we, uh, we farm pretty close to the inlet. Uh, we average a salinity about 30 to 35. Um, it's pretty consistent, uh, even in some pretty significant rainfall conditions. Um, we see pretty good growth year round, um, but it does lead to a lot of challenges being where we are with some biofouling and some other things happening. Um, you know, we're still a small family farm, um, you know, with limited manpower. Uh, you know, as we grow, you know, more employees, you know, right now we're, we're doing the best we can with just, a, um, you know, a few people working the farm day to day. Our oysters, you know, we have, we go direct to customer. Uh, direct to restaurant and uh, distributors. So the oysters find their way, you know, up and down the East Coast, um, you know, and, and we're willing to ship them, you know, as far as we can. But uh, for the most part, most oysters, most oysters stay, you know, pretty local to here. We have some pretty good clients that, um, you know, are able to sell significant amounts where we don't have to go too, too far away from our home base. And yeah, you know, our goal is just, um, a consistent oyster that's as clean as we can, um, that's sustainable, and it's something we can do long term to make sure that the economic impacts and the uh, the family impacts aren't aren't too aggressive. So but that's just half. The other half is the education, and we focus on that tremendously um, through tours and show recycling. So I'll let Rachel talk about that. So. Yeah. So you know being uh, educated as a scientist, you know, it's, it's always important for me to get out that knowledge and everything that we know. Um, and also education is fun and learning to me is fun. So the oyster tours are really my brainchild with 
you know, could have done the, man, <laughs> the manpower. Um, and something else he mentioned that's also super important to our farm is sustainability. Um, so out, out on our oyster tours, we always talk about, you know, sustainability and what we're doing as a company to be sustainable. For example, we all of our oyster bags um, that, that you actually purchase our oysters in are biodegradable. And those are a little bit more expensive, but for me, it's, I don't, I don't want that single use plastic on in the ocean or on our farm. Um, so we take every um, opportunity we can to become sustainable. Um, we also do, do various other things like we don't offer plastic water bottles on our, on our tours. Uh, we try and obviously keep up with our equipment so we don't have to replace that as much um, and various other things. Um, we also volunteer a lot. For example, we'll be at Ocean Fest in Surf City um, helping with the NC Oyster Trail um, booth and we'll bring some of our equipment and just educate people on what, you know, a lot of people see the farms, but they don't know what they are and they, you know, they're, they're not going to come on a tour. So another way for us to talk to people about that is to, to, to volunteer at these events and bring some equipment and, and talk about that. And then another part of our education is we also run a, a shell recycling program. So we will uh, talk to the restaurants that we um, supply to. And if they don't have an oyster recycling program currently, then we help them uh, by picking up their oyster shells um, every one to two weeks. And then we take them to the coastal fed, uh, North Carolina Coastal Fed Recycling Center. Um, so ideally, all of our shells are also returned back to the water um, for to help our wild populations. So that's another 50% uh, of our company. And, and some of our tours, uh, educational tours, will do, you know, mm -hmm. discounted or free, to, you know, depending. Um, yeah, if it's an education-based tour, so let's say a homeschool group or, um, you know, a high school group or a 4-H, um, you know, program or a nonprofit wants to come out to the farm for us. At the end of the day, we are a business. We need to make money, but the making money is not nearly as important as changing the future of North Carolina oysters to us. Um, so we'll do them for free, um, and a lot of times they'll still offer. You know, they're like, "Hey, we would like to pay you something." We're like, all right, just cover the cost for today. We'll take you out. So a lot of our tours aren't even, you know, a revenue generator, and that's completely okay with us. It's not. It's not anything. You know, it's not anything that's gonna. Uh, you know. Break, our, break us 100%, you know, it's stressful at times, and it's a little bit, uh, you know, but, you know, that, you know, after the tour, and you get to see, you know, groups of, you know, high school kids that, you know, now, you know, can hopefully walk around for the rest of their lives, and know why they can eat oysters when they can, and the risks, and, and all the rewards, you know, it, it's just, just amazing to feel that after those tours, so, and the other, you know, the other thing that's tricky about tours is, you know, you have to be a captain, so you have to be a um you know coast guard captain so we have we do work with um local charter fishermen as well so it's not only us taking people to farm because both rachel and i are captains um it's not only us taking people to the farms we work with our local charter fishing community to to accommodate large groups so we've had as many as 30 people on the farm before at one time um you know and as we kind of expand this we found that some of even the local charter captains are interested in doing this for almost no cost too, because they see the benefits of encouraging, you know, clean water and, 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 and sustainable long-term change for us. So, um, yeah. And the cool thing about those bags and the shell is a lot of times the oyster shell that we recycle will go back in the biodegradable bag for shoreline conservation projects. And uh, so we collect most of those bags back. Um, we don't get them all back, but we get most of those bags back from our restaurants. So it's a cool conversation with the restaurant, the chefs, and it's just, hey, can you guys take care and open this bag and can we get it back? So as we deliver their next order, um, we'll get oysters back. And one of the things that we want to press more than anything else is we're interested in recycling oyster shells, even if you don't buy our oysters. Yeah. So we reach out to everybody and we're like, hey, you don't have to purchase our oysters. But what we want to see is these oysters getting back. And let's tell you why. And if you can't afford it, let us take on the cost and let us look at some grant funding. Let us look at things where we can try to solve it for you. And so a lot of the customers, although it would be nice to have them pay, um, a lot of them, you know, just really can't afford it. And, uh, and so as we kind of, and now they're sort of seeing that it's not, maybe it's not as expensive as they kind of thought. And we, uh, you know, we're trying to work through these processes and, and figure out how we can make it a little bit more accessible long-term.
That's awesome. That was honestly going to be one of my questions. Um, it's because I know uh, here, you know, in Maryland, we have uh, shell recycling, but I never heard. Well, I've heard about it in um, uh, Maryland and Virginia and parts of Pennsylvania, but I've never heard it anywhere else uh, um, that I can remember. So it's cool that y'all are uh, shell recycling also. Yeah, we're not the only farmer that's interested in looking at these. We're not the only people that are interested. The problem with it historically here in North Carolina is it's been, it's been a, you know, it's against the law to throw oysters away in North Carolina, in the um, landfill. you know, into the landfill. Um, so you need to reuse them or recycle them in some kind of appropriate way. Um, so it's been difficult for a long time for people to attach on to, you know, well, how can we do this without it being too stinky or too nasty or too crazy? So the Coastal Federation does provide shellfish drop-off sites here in North Carolina, but they're, they're not as many as, you know, we would hope for. So one of the things that we're trying to do as a culture is look at, um, you know, what more are? places, uh, more people that can offer things, you know, and maybe, um, you know, we're just one little small part, but there are all a lot of other awesome companies that are trying to figure it out here in North Carolina. And we you know we want to see it long. We want to see this as a long-term solution, not a short term. Let's just do it for a year. You know, we really want to see it super long term. So yeah, and I think for sustainability, you know, we need more state support for shellfish yeah. recycling. It used to be that the North Carolina Division of Marine Fisheries, they would um, you know, uh, do the recycling. And when funding over time was taken away from that agency, they couldn't keep it up. And so now it's up to nonprofits like the Coastal Fed and our growers who are busy. And so that means it doesn't happen, you know, as much as, as it ought to, especially when we're already putting in a lot of investments from the state and the federal side to restore, um, you know, wild oyster habitat. Shellfish recycling is truly one piece of that that we have to, you know, uh, make a commitment to. Um, this is a question for everybody. I'm going to start with Ghost Fleet. Um, what do you think uh, the hardest, what's been your hardest hurdle um, in business or as an oyster farm? You know, the first thing that pops to mind when you say that is obviously the financial side of it. Um, it's very expensive to become an oyster farmer. Um, if I would have. Oh, to start up. Yeah, to start up. If I would have, if I would have. You know, or if we would have probably realized how much money we were going to have to invest and how long we were going to have to have, you know, uh, two jobs and working seven days a week, it probably would have been something that we would have maybe considered an alternative avenue. But one of the great things about this industry is you get so addicted to it that, uh, you know, you sort of get, oh, I can do this with a couple of cages. And then the next thing you realize is, oh, man, I need like a hundred of those things. And then you're like, oh, I need like a thousand of these things. You know, and, uh, and you know, as you grow a better oyster, you know, you sort of fine tune it. But the biggest hurdle initially was financial, you know, backing in it. You know, there are, you know, I, I think there are some things to kind of help, you know, farmers get started, but there's not many. And we've definitely discovered that. But I would say that probably the thing that sticks out to me more than anything that's been the biggest hurdle is we live in an area here, uh, Topsail Island, Surf City, that's, you know, very deep rooted in its oyster heritage and culture. There's an oyster that comes from here called the Stump Sound Oyster, if you've ever heard of it. Um, and the Stump Sound Oyster is, um, is pretty famous. You know, if you, go, if you go to places and you kind of see this oyster, it's got the perfect salinity and butteriness all at the same time. It's a great little area. But those people tend to want an oyster that's, that's pretty large. So a four or five inch oyster, um, the bushel is, you know, super powerful. You know, that, that phrase here, like a lot of places, is super powerful. So for us as an oyster farmer, it's very difficult to sort of change our local culture here. So the biggest hurdle I would say as a farmer is just convincing people around here that a farm raised oyster with a higher meat to shell ratio is just as comparable and equal. Um, same oyster as the Eastern oyster. Uh, it's a comparable product that they can find maybe more value out of or, or similar value. And, uh, it's, and then add on top of that, that you can eat it in the summer. Yeah. And uh, you're just yeah. blowing people's mind. And yeah. <laughs> most people that have tried far, our, you know, farm oysters, whether it's ours or another farm yeah. around here, and, you know, we'll support any other farm, like go try all the farms around here. 
generally are like, uh, I loved it. You know, I'm, I not going back to wild oysters or, you know, you just put them in two different categories. Wild oysters are awesome and amazing for what they are. And then farmed oysters are something completely different and awesome and, and what they are. So it's, it's just, that's been a hurdle to like, just try yeah. them, just try them. So, so if, if you were to go on the NC Oyster Trails website, you're looking at, um, you know, where can you go eat an oyster here locally in our area, right? There's really only a couple options um, in the Surf City Topsoil area. Um, and our, we have a, a Shuck and Shack here in town. Jason and Beverly, some of the greatest uh, stewards of the environment that, you know, I've met in a long time. Um, they, that's our option. We don't really have many more options here. Um, so we don't even have, you know, this place. We, we don't live in an area where we can sell a tremendous amount of oysters right here as far as direct to uh, restaurants where people can go and have a night out and eat our oysters. But as you travel to Wilmington, you travel to Raleigh, you travel, you know, a little bit more north, those, those options get more. So the great thing about the oyster trails, we can point people in the direction of saying, hey, um, if you have found value in eating this oyster, go look at the oyster trail and go experience more. And we have had some, some of the greatest feedback about the trail, you know, really being able to, you know, really overcome and accomplish that hurdle of, you know, trying to change North Carolina's culture. And uh, it's, we get more and more tours every day from the oyster trail. We get more and more people coming to us saying, hey, I found you through the oyster trail. Uh, and it's, you know, we see this biggest hurdle, we see ourselves overcoming it, but I think we've got, we still have a long road to go. Yeah, I think the, for me, wild and farmed oysters are both awesome. I like to eat both. I wanna make sure there's plenty in the water on, you know, both accounts, um, you know, I eat lots of different kinds of fruit. I like uh, different kinds of apples. <laughs> I like bananas. You know, I eat it all. And um, I don't understand why anyone would want to say, well, no, I can't eat that, you know, kind. I'd say if I'm going to an oyster roast, I'm probably eating wild oysters. If I'm eating them on the half shell, they're going to be farmed. Um, if you're roasting them or broiling them, eh, I might not care. Either way is fine. And so they are just slightly different products that I think everyone should, you know, take it on themselves to try. As far as like the oyster trail, let's get back to that. Um, how do you guys like find your members or like if people are interested, what, what can they do? Yeah. So, um, you know, we have 75 plus sites, trail sites now um, that again, you know, represent restaurants, markets, uh, shellfish farm tours, volunteer opportunities, education groups, outdoor adventure um, excursions. And, you know, initially we had to really get out there and um, uh, introduce ourselves. We have a volunteer crew that uh, works across the state to recruit members and um, folks that live on the coast, that live inland, that just love oysters. Um, and after we, you know, I'd say kind of got a certain momentum going in the first couple of years, we don't really spend much time on, you know, recruitment anymore. You know, folks, they, they come to us, they know what the trail is. I've even seen seafood restaurants promote themselves as trail members, you know, say I'm on the oyster trail. And I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of you. Um, so they are using this as their own branding tool. Right. And, uh, you know, we do reach out after that and make sure <laughs> that they are uh, representing our brand. Um, and then we say, hey, if you want to talk about the Oyster Trail, please do uh, uh, pay your dues, <laughs> become a member. Um, anyone can go on our website and uh, apply. Um, all of our members, they must take a North Carolina Oysters 101 quiz. So they need to understand the essential factors about oysters you know we don't want you know a, a restaurant selling North Carolina oysters and, and they don't understand the environmental benefits you know we don't want a restaurant um, uh, who doesn't get it you know the idea of marijuana we want to make sure that um, anybody talking about our oysters you know is really an ambassador um, for uh, this product for this very special organism um, and so that's part of what the trail does is we try to share a consistent message um, and bring together all of the people, the groups, the organizations, uh, the businesses um, that are, you know, making North Carolina oysters truly um, uh, something that is emblematic of our state. So where do you see um, the NC Oyster Trail? Like, what does the future look like for it? 
Hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess I just hope more and more people learn about it and understand that this is the spot to go when you want to make sure that you know where your seafood's coming from. Unfortunately, a lot of times if you go to a restaurant and you order seafood, it's probably not from North Carolina. Um, it may not be from, you know, anywhere nearby. And so if you're someone who cares about local foods, who wants to know where your food comes from, North Carolina Oyster Trail is just a great spot to, you know, go to the website, go to the map, say, hey, this is where I am. You can actually put in, you know, I'm, I want to go somewhere within five miles of Wilmington, or um, I'm willing to drive this far. This is what I'm looking for. I need a seafood market. Where do I go? Um, we really want to be a trusted source for that information. And I think because the trail is um, organized by North Carolina Sea Grant, North Carolina Coastal Federation and the North Carolina Shellfish Growers Association, you know, we really do have the knowledge and kind of that, uh, you know, understanding of what makes a, a great trail site. And again, you know, who is really um, an ambassador for, you know, the best of North Carolina oysters. That's awesome. Um, any upcoming events or anything we need to look for as far as like the oyster trail besides oyster week or did you want to elaborate any more on oyster week yeah i think in terms of oyster week there are lots of fun things going on that folks should get on their calendars now um ocean fest is one of those so that's going to be in surf city rachel mentioned that ghost fleet will be there i know um, Oyster Trail uh, representatives will be there. Um, they, last year, they had a, a vintage surfing contest, so you could go out and surf these old surfboards and, you know, great food and education. They have this big uh, eco tent area. Um, there's also going to be an event, I know, at Wrightsville Beach Brewery, so that is um, another one of our trail sites. And they're going to be partnering with uh, Bald Head Island Conservancy to talk about um, uh, oysters. And they're going to be selling, I think, a uh, half dozen oysters on the half shell for $15 all week long. Those are oysters from Middle Sound Mariculture and NC Oyster Company. Um, Outer Banks Seafood Festival, that's going to be coming up on October 15th. Um, in the Outer Banks. So there's just going to be so many things going on. Definitely check out our website, ncoystertrail.org. You can go to our page on Oyster Week and Oyster Month, and we'll have a calendar that's going to be shared in the next week or so on our website. Awesome oh, news. Gardner, yep. I have one what? more thing for you on sure, yeah. events. I don't know if you're going to Farm Aid. Do you know that concert with Willie Nelson? I don't. So Farm Aid, I think it used to happen back in the day and it's happening again. They're on tour. Dave Matthews Band, uh, Willie Nelson, all kinds of folks. And so they basically play music to support farmers across the country. And that is going to be, I believe, September 23rd. And I know they're going to have some North Carolina oysters um, basically being eaten by the VIPs there. So <laughs> some of the musicians, um, I don't know if they're going to be singing about oysters, but I can hope. <laughs> I got to send you this link. So um, <laughs> it's uh, this. If you've seen any of my Instagram uh, videos, I got this oyster knife. Uh, it's a Chesapeake stabber style knife. Um, Dale German makes it up in Baltimore. And um, but what's what's special about Dale, not only because he's a master um woodmaker and he um he's done a bunch of uh projects with uh uh was it a pride of Baltimore, uh, making actually knives out of the boat and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. But anyway, he has a CD out um and it's one of the songs is called consider the oyster and I'll send you guys a link, but like I, I made, uh, like, I, I don't know. I just like Dale and, um, you know, he has a real voice that you wouldn't think would be a singing voice, but the songs are good. <laughs> the songs are good. Yeah. But the one about the oyster, when you said, you know, you don't know if they were going to be singing about oysters. I just <laughs> kind of rang it up. Now, what kind of genre do you think goes best with oyster like music? Um, so what's funny is the first year that I competed, no, yeah, the first year I competed, 
uh, in the national shucking competition, I placed six. So I placed in the top six. Heck yeah. Na- nationally ranked oyster shucker. Um, the song that they were playing at the time that I um, give credit to helping me get across that line, like boosting it up, was Elvis. Oh. And it was, uh, I don't know if that's the name of it, but it's Little Sister. Y'all know that? Mm. I'm, look, I'm gonna look it up. I'm not sure. Yeah. La la la. La la la. But anyway, um, it's like a little sister. Don't you uh kiss me like your big sister did or something like that. Basically, kissing and running, uh, which probably wouldn't be um politically correct this time. I don't know how young that little sister is, but <laughs> anywho, uh, but no. Uh, so I would definitely say like bluegrass and blues, um, anything with an upbeat, like mm-hmm. is, is, uh, is oyster music to me. All right. Yeah. And recently a couple of my reels, cause you know, I'm all about the social media, a couple of my reels kind of like had some good reach, but it was from, um, one was, um, uh, Baltimore has their own type of music. Um, I don't, I don't know if you call it house music or whatever it's mm-hmm. called. And then DC has the go-go music. Yeah. And both of those videos are like, as soon as I heard it, I was like, you know what? I don't care if it's trending music. I don't care. Like, I was like, yo, it just, it, it gives you that feeling. And I just put some oyster videos behind it and they did pretty good. Well, when the trail comes out with our oyster music video, um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to bring, bring you in Gardner, give us some tips. For sure. <laughs> Make for sure. sure. Let's do it. Yeah, make sure it makes you want to shock and all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds good to me. Um, did anybody have anything else? Like, have we left anything out? It's been oh, so yeah, cool talking know. to y'all. Yeah, it's great. It's really yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah Any more? Us, uh, if people want to look for us in Oyster Week, you know, we'll be at the North Carolina, or not, not just Oyster Week, but we're going to say Oyster Month as well. Mm-hmm. They can look for us at the North Carolina Seafood Festival. Um, Obviously, we'll be at the uh, Ocean Fest in Surf City. Um, and then just today, we finalized that we're going to uh, partner up with a, a pretty cool little little place here in town called Salt Marsh Market. And we're going to offer um, an educational booth. So we're going to kind of step out of our, our Let's Shuck Oysters environment. And we're going to just say, hey, let's... Uh, you know, let's have a couple of drinks and let's just talk oysters and uh, we're going to see, we're going to see how, you know, how people respond to that. Um, you know, not so much of, you know, focusing on sales, but focusing on the education. And so we finalized, trying to finalize all that today, but we definitely are so excited today. So that's cool. Keep me posted. Yeah. You had yeah, me a drink. Sure so. Yeah. Um, and you can find us at ghostlyoystercode.com as well. So yeah, and feel free to, you know, we always encourage farmers and anyone interested in oysters to reach out to us. So if you got advice, if you got questions, if you got anything for us, you know, we, you know, we're a pretty open book, you know, all the way down to how we got started to where we are today, to challenges along the way. And we, um, we find value in, in communicating with our community. So it's, you know, there's really no question that's off limits for us. And, um, you know, we'd love to see more people get into it and more people continue it. So, so that's one thing I actually do love about this uh, podcast is, um, so I'll just tell you a quick story. I think I've shared it on a podcast before, but um, my buddy, Alex Lambert, um, he was a listener. Uh, he may be still listening, uh, but he has an oyster farm now. And he reached out to me before he had the oyster farm. And he was like, yeah, I was just trying to do some research and, um, I ran across your podcast and, uh, you know, but long story short, now he has like a successful oyster farm and he's like killing it up here in Virginia. And, um, I just did a, another interview before this one and it was with short up, uh, and they're doing great things in Hampton roads, uh, Virginia. And, uh, they know Alex and he's going to be at their, their event coming up. So just like, you know, it's a small oyster world. Yeah, you know? yes. yeah. yeah. So um shout out to Short Up, shout out to Oyster South, shout out to Billion Oyster, yeah. um, shout out to East Coast Shellfish and Pacific mm-hmm. Shellfish and um seal. It's, it's so many nonprofits and there's so many people that's coming together is trying to do the right thing um by oysters and aquaculture and the people who are um you know holding it all together. And um uh, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, I want to thank you guys 
for taking time, of course, talking to me on the Oyster Ninja podcast. I want to thank the listeners for tuning in. Um, I, I'm just excited to be in this world. And uh, thank y'all for, um, I said this on the last one, but like, I got, this is my thing now. Thank you guys for being stewards of the ocean and the bay and the, the rivers and the, the, the everything. Just thank you guys for being positive um, role models. And like, I mean, like y'all are killing it. You know what I mean? We're trying. Are you going to be a landlock? <laughs> are you going landlock? No, I don't think I'm going to landlock. <laughs> I, every year I want to go. Like I, I really want to go. Like I've, I've made, and it's crazy. Cause like I, I went out to connect, connect. And I went up to New York and I went up to like I want to print something this weekend. Um, it's just so much going on. It's always something uh, going on. And, uh, I didn't hear any southern places in there. I don't know. That's, that's the problem. Know. That's the problem. Like, I I don't know. You're always welcome uh, for an oyster tour down at in here's Taco. the thing. Come and and somebody else, somebody else reached out to me. I think it was uh it wasn't Pelican, but it was uh somebody else reached out to me and they were uh they they gave me somewhere to stay. Airbnb, like when you ready, come on down. And it's just like, what else can I put on this calendar? <laughs> <laughs> the calendar is so packed, but like that's, that's why I, that's why I've like really been concentrating on this podcast this year. Like the growth on the podcast is crazy. I want to thank all the listeners, thank all the guests. Um, because like it's just going crazy this year. Um, so leave a review. So that the algorithm knows that we're we're actually talking to people uh and they like it. Um, but besides that, um I just want to get this podcast to where it can fuel all the stuff that I want to do, like going to the different oyster farms, telling the people about your farm, but in person. You know, so that's that's what I wanna um that's where I wanna get to. Um more education, more um doing things with things with, um because for me kids planting seeds and those kids um is the future you know it's just that you just never know where where it can lead to uh with these young people they're so daggone smart um but thank you guys all right um i don't want to hold you up any longer um but yeah well we appreciate you too and I, we love your podcast so good job <laughs> and we hope it thank keeps you. going and it's successful so we appreciate yeah. well I'll leave a review and we'll keep listening. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Gardner. We will be promoting y'all on uh, the Oyster Trail, our social media too. So for sure, yeah, I yeah, love it, love it, love it. Thank appreciate so the work. Much. Yeah, love it. All right, peace. Peace. Bye. And now a word from our sponsors. My name is Matt Owens, and I'm the founder and CEO of Healthy Ocean Seafood Company, the owner of the Pescavore brand. For the last five years, six years now, actually I've been the sustainability director at Trimarine, which is a, a global tuna supplier. Uh, we're down here at San Pedro right now at a Trimarine facility. And so for the last several years, I've been working to uh, effectively manage tuna resources all around the world. So we have these great sustainable fisheries in the U.S., but most of that gets exported a lot of times processed overseas, then imported back into the United States. We have a huge seafood trade deficit. And I wanted to find a way in which I could add value to the resource in here on the West Coast and bring it to market here on the West Coast. And so that's really how Pescavore started. And so to take a West Coast caught tuna and process it into something that's different, something that's delicious, something that's convenient, something that's healthy, and something that's sustainable. And that's what the Pescavore brand is all about. It's making seafood snackable, it's taking sustainable tuna, and it's, it's bringing it into the snack space so that it's convenient for people. You can eat it anywhere, it's delicious, it's good for you, and importantly, you can feel good about it. You're supporting local fishermen, you're supporting a sustainable fishery that's well-managed.